This is Dave Meyer with BusyWeb. We're going to join you today with a buzzcast about search engine optimization. The art and the fine black art sometimes, it would seem, of getting you to rank on search engines. So if you have a website, if you have content that you're trying to get found for, as we know, the one place that is pretty much the complete center of the universe as far as the web is Google. So if you have a product or service, if you have something that you're trying to sell or a service that you're trying to represent, oftentimes you need to rely on getting found on Google because what people will do, they will pop open their phones or their devices, they will type you in their search box and your goal is to show up when that happens. I am Dave Meyer with BusyWeb and I'm joined today by our SEO specialist, Jenny. Jenny, say hello. Hello. And uh, Jenny and I both have quite a bit of experience in search engine optimization. Jenny, however, is by far smarter than I am as far as search engine stuff goes. Uh, Jenny, tell us just a little bit about yourself so that we know uh, kind of who we're talking to. Um, I, my name is Jenny. I work at BusyWeb on pay-per-click and SEO. Um, and I am from Maple Grove, Minnesota. Perfect. Well, thank you very much. And I am actually going to screen share back here for just a second or just stop the screen sharing process so you can see us. Hello. And we're going to go back and forth a little bit today and just have conversation as well. Um, the Buzzcast is slightly different than a standard busy webinar. And we do our busy webinars the third Wednesday of every month. This is the first Wednesday when we do our Buzzcast. And so in a couple of weeks, you'll see me do some things, but this is really um, our conversation. So um, Jenny is our expert, and for any of our clients who have worked with us on search engines or anyone that has had any websites done by BusyWeb, um, Jenny is the wizard behind the curtain that makes sure that everybody can get found. So yes. thanks, Jenny, glad, glad to have you here. And I am going to screen share back. And we'll go right over again to our main screen. So here we go. First, what is BusyWeb? Who are we? What do we do? Well, first, we are a digital marketing agency. And inside of that, what I mean is we help our clients get results with anything on the web, whether it's email marketing, social media marketing, AdWords, Google advertising, Facebook ads, content writing and delivery, and of course, search engine optimization. So we're gonna talk a lot about SEO today and really how to get started. And we're gonna intersperse this between slides and just talking. So as we go through, you're gonna see that we're gonna screen share back and forth just a little bit, and uh, that'll be how we're gonna connect. One minor programming note, you'll note on your screen that if you click on the main section here and if you've joined our event, there's a big button that says click here to watch the webinar now. And if you're watching on YouTube, you'll note that there's a little chat window and I'm actually going to go back and restore the chat. There's a live chat window right in here and all you need to do is click under the say something if you're logged in and you'll be able to see us, so or we'll be able to see that question. So if you have questions about search engine optimization, if you want us to review something that you're struggling with, um, just enter in your URL and or the question that you specifically have, and we would love to help you. So um, enter your questions here. And I don't normally yell at people, but uh, I had my caps lock accidentally knocked down, so that's uh, where you go. All right, so back to our normally scheduled program. First, I want to cover a few things just about basic terms in search engine optimization. And Jenny, feel free to, to fill in on anything that I say wrong in here, but um, SEO, of course, means search engine optimization. Um, what I love is when people say SEO optimization, that's like optimization, optimization, <laughs> right? So it's good enough to just say SEO. You might hear us bang around SERP, that's the search engine results page. And an example of an SERP is on the right inside of this slide. And that's just what shows up when people type search or when they search for whatever keyword and key term they're trying to find you for. So in this case, I type BusyWeb and here's all the stuff that pops up on that first page of BusyWeb, search engine results page. Um, keywords 
are the words or phrases that you want to rank for on search engines, correct? And is there a limitation on keyword size, like long tail keywords or any of that stuff, Jenny? Um, not really. I mean, I, I probably wouldn't go after sentences, although you could in certain situations. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a phrase, four or five words. Right. Maybe. But a typical keyword would be like digital marketing Minneapolis. Yes. Right? Yes. So there's usually some sort of location if people are searching for a specific service, um, you might be searching for um, sparkly dog collars yes. or something random. But it's usually more than one word. So the key word phrase is sometimes a little bit misleading, right? Yes. Right. Okay. So because I wouldn't want to just rank for sparkly if I was trying for sparkly dog collars. That's right. And it would be uh, overly competitive for just one word, typically, <laughs> right. sparkly. <laughs> right. And you'd probably get really dangerous results for sparkly. <laughs> um, metadata, that's the stuff that's behind the scenes. So we might talk about meta titles, meta descriptions, alt tags, um, all of that stuff. That's the things that you'd say in your website that help Google understand what you're trying to do, right? Right. So, it, and uh, I don't think, you know, H tags are also probably interesting yes. for semantic code. But you know, it's it's just the stuff that the end user doesn't necessarily see, but that you need to enter in if you want to rank appropriately. Some of it doesn't necessarily affect rankings, like meta titles, meta descriptions won't help you rank better, right? Correct. But it will guide what people see when you do rank. Yes, the the goal of the meta description is um, for the user experience. Um, if people can see what they're about to click on and a little snippet of what your page is about beforehand. Um, ultimately, it provides them with a better user experience. They get to a page they're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, it's accurate information. And typically, Google ranks it um, higher the more it's clicked on as well. OK, so the higher you go, the better it works. And meta tags, alt tags, descriptions, all that stuff, that just helps guide the user experience. Yes. Got it. OK. Perfect. So um, going back, the alt text, that is the stuff that tells Google what images are on, the, on your website. And a lot of people mess this up. They forget to input what the alt text on that image is. So if you have a beautiful picture on your website, um, a lot of times if you hover over it, if there's anything at all, it'll say like image one, two, three, four, right? It'll just say the file name. And that doesn't help Google know what it is. If you have a picture of your product or service, or if you're really trying to rank for sparkly dog collar, your image should say sparkly dog collar on that picture of Fido with rhinestones, right? Yep. So, um, and then finally, ROI. This is just kind of a business jargon term, but return on investment. You're going to spend time, energy, and maybe money to get your website optimized to rank better. And your goal as a marketer is to make sure that those results are actually getting you something. So that's your ROI. So basically then, um, as we get into SEO in general, you know, to start, you really need to know where you're going. And Jenny, you probably have some better tools than this. These are just the basic and free ones. But you know, trends.google.com is a great way to see what people are talking about on the web. It is. Um, and then the Google Keyword Tool, and I won't even bother including the URL here, but just Google Google Keyword Tool, <laughs> and it really pops right up. It's intended as a tool to help you find keywords to advertise, but it's also fantastic for helping you find the right keywords and the right ways to optimize the right stuff on your site. Right? Correct. Yes. And then SEO in general is truly all about content. So. You know, to, to have a optimized website for digital marketing, you need to say digital marketing as keywords inside of your content. And you can't, at the same time, overdo those keywords. So if I wanted to optimize my website for, you know, let's go um, monarch butterflies, right? If, if I say, my monarch butterfly website is the best place to find monarch butterflies because monarch butterflies are really cool. And if you have monarch butterflies on your in your garden, then linking to monarch butterflies or capturing a monarch butterfly is a great way to be a monarch butterfly collector. 
that's keyword stuffing. And so if you overdo it, anything over 5.5% of the total content of any given page, if over that is that keyword or phrase, Google will start downgrading you and might outright ban you for those keywords. And how aggressive are they on those on those stuffing kind of things? So from what I've seen, um, basically in the past year, we've had a couple of competitors of our clients that are keyword stuffing and ranking in the first spot for a lot of keywords. Um, I've watched them, at, you know, first three months, I'd say they were still in the first spot. Mm -hmm. It's a slow process for them <clears throat> to downgrade. Um, I think they give you an opportunity to clean it up and, and yeah. you know, they're not going to send you an alert or a notification and say, Hey, right. we notice you're stuffing, but, um, it is a slow process. It isn't something that you're going to, um, stuff your site and then rank in the first spot and then drop off the next day. Right. Um, but it will happen. Right. Um, so it, it's something just like SEO ranking in the first spot takes time. So does the downgrade. Right. And I, I think the best analogy for that is probably that Google and Google search engine pages are kind of like a freight liner, like a huge ship, right? So it takes a long time to correct course. It's not a speedboat. You're not going to be cruising in and out of the in in and out of your search engine pages. So you post 15 things on your website, it's not going to dramatically change it tomorrow. Correct. And if you do something terribly wrong, like stuffing keywords, it might help short term, like it, it might nudge you in the right direction. But as soon as Google comes around to it, they're going to penalize you, and then it's going to take you a long time to recover from that. So that's one of the problems, one of the issues with bad SEO or with bad SEO with black hat SEO is that it can take a long time for all of these things to catch up and then it's sometimes apocalyptic to businesses where they get outright banned and then it takes forever to get you back if you even can that's right yes that's correct and that's I've seen it um, a few times um, the work you put in it to the SEO um, it's heavy and it is time consuming and to, I think a lot of times you'll see businesses out there, mm -hmm. we guarantee that first spot ranking. Mm -hmm. And typically what I'm seeing is that they are stuffing the site and it, it, it's even deeper than being penalized by Google is your potential customers are going on your site and, right. and they are not finding what they're looking for. All they're mm -hmm. finding is your digital marketing agency, right. you know, 30 times in a paragraph right. and it's not helping your, your sales. Yes. You're in the right. first spot. Yes. Your clicks are high uh -huh. um, for the short term. However, are you converting those clicks? Not likely. They're probably right. frustrated and not finding mm -hmm. answers. And, and honestly, that's one of the frustrations that we hear a lot of times from people that come to us from competitors in that they've been essentially sold a bill of goods. They're, they're, former SEO company has said, we can get you to the top of Google results. And people say, well, awesome, that's fantastic. I can't wait. Um, that's going to be magical. Well, and then what they do is they'll find the most random keyword or key phrase, the long tail keywords that they know that they can rank you for. They'll work on that, say, congratulations, you're on page one for, you know, in our sparkly dog collar one for, mm -hmm. you know, chihuahua, red haired, light pink sparkle. Right, and they'll say, "Congratulations, you're on page page one. Give us our money." Yes, and or they'll ruin your website such that when you do go to that site, it's so optimized that you lose the actual sellability on the website. Yeah, I see that a lot. So okay, got yeah. it. If it if it feels <laughs> like, and if you're visiting websites around the web, and it looks like it's just all gobbledygook, and there's just it it seems forced and stilted and weird, um, that's probably an over SEO page. There's no substitute for real content and real conversation, and we'll get there. Yep. Cool. So um, I don't see any questions yet, but again, don't be shy. If you do have specific SEO questions, would love to hear those from you today. So um, here we go, and we're back on track. So the other thing that I didn't mention yet, but that we should talk about a little bit, is that it can always help, especially for small businesses, to localize. So if you can use Google+, Plus, um, Google My Business, Yahoo, Bing, Yelp, Foursquare, they all have local pages. And what entering your information into local directories will get you is whenever someone is searching 
near you, you're going to show up higher in those results because you've tagged your spot in the world, right? Right. Um, it, it's a good idea to do this if you haven't already. Um, it does help quite a bit. There's um, quite a few of our clients that will show up for certain keywords. Um, first spot on the page in the search engine results and also their local business listing. And it's really powerful when somebody is searching um, for any sort of service or product to see that kind of take over the page is, is kind of a really strong indicator that this is a reliable company kind of right off the bat. Absolutely. And remember that Google now knows where you are at every moment of your <laughs> entire life. So if you happen to be near BusyWeb, if you're in one of the shopping areas, like right near our office here, we're going to pop up on top because we're locally optimized. So if you type in any of the keywords that we even remotely um, rank for, um, there's a really good chance that we're going to pop up really high because Google knows exactly where you are because you're searching on your phone. And so that works out really, really well, especially for, you know, brick and mortar stores. Uh, this is uh, something that I want to get into now. We're going to go a little bit deeper into the weeds and talk about kind of how to set things up. So I'm going to let Jenny tee this off and talk about some competitor intelligence. Um, I think that when you're starting your SEO, um, it can get a bit overwhelming. Um, and a, a, an important piece, I think, before you even start your keyword research is competitor intel. Um, you want to know who your online competition is. You um, want to make sure um, it is online and not who um, sales-wise or local-wise who you might think it is. Um, a lot of times we see um, we'll get a list of competitors and then it ends up being it's Amazon and Home Depot and those types of stores that are competing with our clients' products or services. And so even though um, they say, here's our local competition, it, it isn't necessarily the case online. So it's really important to find out um, if you have a rough idea of what keywords you wanna rank for, who is ranking for them right now. Um, and then you want to dive a little deeper into that and you want to figure out, well, what is, what are they doing that they're ranking? Uh, are they, is it blogs? Is it um, content? Is it just product listings? You know, what is it on their page that they have um, going right now that is getting them on that top uh, search results spot? And it's probably going to be pretty obvious what they're doing. Right? Typically it is pretty obvious. Um, there are times when you're neck and neck. Um, our industry is a perfect example of that, where it's highly, highly competitive, um, where you have to dig really, really, really deep into um, a lot of the technical elements and, and content and figure out what it is that people are doing on their site when the obvious isn't so obvious um, mm -hmm. or it's very competitive. So in that case, um, you know, you do have to go a little bit further, but there always seems to be a hole somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, so even though you might think you can't compete with some of these people, you can. Mm -hmm. um, it's just how, you know, you need to spend the time and the research kind of up front to figure this, sure. these pieces out. Yeah, and don't, don't get too caught up in the granddaddy keywords, yes. right? So like if I was, if, if BusyWeb was trying to rank for web design, it would be really hard. But we we were ranking for a long time, and I think we're still bouncing kind of in that range very, very highly for WordPress web design because mm -hmm. it's slightly more specific. <clears throat> and honestly, when people are searching for that kind of thing, they're usually more likely to buy. So if you can find that slightly nuanced key phrase, um, that's going to be your ace in the hole to get you further into real results. Cool. Um, keyword research. So this is interesting. You know, once once you get your competitors going, and once you really start figuring out who you're going to reach and how you're going to reach them, and compiling that list of keywords um, using you know these are some of the the more ninja level tools, the Jenny level tools, but uh, SEM Rush, um, Sulf, Uber Suggest, of course Google Webmaster Tools is the E for everybody one. Um, and we've talked about Google Webmaster Tools in past busy webinars. So search through our archive if you want to know more about Webmaster Tools. But you know, when you're looking at keywords, um, Jenny, how do you 
make sure and, and describe what the long tail strategy for keywords is and how to, how to really get the right keywords for your business? I think um, in the beginning stages of keyword research, um, I, I definitely use the tools Dave just covered. Um, they are like the salt in the uh, Uber Suggest. Those are free tools. Google Webmaster's free. Um, they are, I added a couple that are kind of a little obscure because at times you're going to need some obscure ideas for mm -hmm. keywords, mm -hmm. uh, especially how it, it depends on how the competition is online. If it's competitive, you really need to think outside the box. Um, and that's where the long tail strategy comes in. <clears throat> You know, I'll continue to use busy web. Uh, digital marketing or digital marketing agency is extremely competitive. Mm -hmm. um, you know, not only do you have agencies using those terms, but you have um, business owners. You know, there's so many different levels of it that it's just extremely, extremely tough um, to rank for that keyword. Um, but there is a long tail strategy involved um, and you can use your local market, you know, um, digital marketing Minneapolis, we had talked about digital marketing Minnesota, we could even do digital marketing Champlin, something as simple as that. It, it does um, have results attached to it and that's where you want to go back and use the tools to make sure there is a volume attached because even though the keyword might sound good, it isn't always the case um, right. with search volume. <laughs> And that's that's the tricky part, right? And I think um, I'm going to stop the screen share for a second and go back to our video because um, long tail keywords and what that means is there's a distribution curve, like a bell curve, right? On on everything in the world, it seems anything in business, and long tail is the theory that you know if you have if you have a general distribution curve as you go further out down the line that long tail is actually equal in size to the big curve right so what it what it basically means to oversimplify is you can get a lot of stuff or a lot of results in the end of that distribution curve so as the search results get smaller and smaller you can still have a tremendous impact inside of those small keywords or those extremely fine tuned keywords because there's still people searching for them. It's just not millions anymore. Correct. Right? Yes. So the, if you can be more specific in your keywords, if you can be more specific about your location, if you can be more specific, period, in what you're trying to do, you're going to get better results. And still, I'm not knocking that you should probably have some big keywords. And you know, certainly if I could own web design or digital <laughs> marketing, Minneapolis, I completely would. But it's it's very possible to go completely broke trying to optimize for keywords that aren't really going to do as much as a long tail or a very specific keyword. So that's that's kind of what we're talking about there. So I guess the the mantra here is think smarter and figure out where you can have the most impact, right? Right. So. I think that trend has has shifted over time. Mm -hmm. You know, as the web is grown over the years the um it used to be one word uh right. or maybe two right um now i don't know it, it you know my search habits and i think everybody's is right. i am typing in a sentence sometimes it depends right. on what i'm looking for and it, mm -hmm. anymore just you know we using the google tools more and more and you know you kind of see these trends evolve mm -hmm. and people know that they can type into google and say um I want to find a Chinese restaurant mm -hmm. near me. And it is just specific. It gives them the answers they need. That's mm -hmm. where the local play comes in. Right. And um, they will type out a sentence or, right. you know, a very specific product, color, mm -hmm. size, you know, et cetera. So right. um, anymore, without the long tail, you almost kind of lose. Right. Yeah. And it's you, you kind of almost need to be part psychologist in order to figure yes. some of these things out because mm -hmm. you need to get into people's heads and figure out okay what are they going to type or more more likely now what are they just going to say into their phone are they going to say hey Siri or are they going to say um, any of those other things and I yep, my phone just popped up and, and it's recording what I'm saying right now because I said that um, 
<laughs> so you know, your your Amazon device, your Android phone, when you type or when you know if if you're just driving down the road and you need to search for something, you know, you're using your hands free and so you're typing, you're going to say things a lot differently than you would type. And so, you know, it's it's always a good idea to do location plus core keyword um, as specific as possible inside of those core keywords. You're going to get much better. BusyWeb is located in Champlin, so Champlin SEO agency. You know, of course, we own that because there's nobody else. Um, but you know, Minneapolis is harder, Minnesota is tougher, and then just general SEO or web design or any of those are really, really hard because there's millions of companies that are trying to do that. So you think about what people will say when they're trying to find you. Yes. Right. The more you can get into your customer's head right. and understand them, I think the better uh, chance you have um, at really almost, I won't say eliminating the keyword research piece, right. but it's a really good starting point when you kind of know what right. it is they're looking for. And, and if you just listen, sometimes they'll tell you, oh, hey, I searched you know, this phrase online. That's how right. I found you. It's a mm -hmm. good thing to you know, just kind of take a mental note of that and remember right. that these are the terms your customers are are actually using. Right, and if, if they found you on that, there's probably a good shot that you actually say that somewhere on your website, yep. right? So you're going to identify, these are this is what we know our, cu our customer is going to type into Google if they're going to find us for this particular product or service. You need to make sure that your website says that in a few places and that a link is, says that and that your meta descriptions and your titles say that and that you've got content that links back and forth around those things and a landing page ideally because if someone's searching you don't want to just send them to the home page on your website right, right. Um, so there's all kinds of things that go into this which is what makes it really fun for us as marketing <laughs> geeks right um, okay so let's go back in and tell us a little bit more about what this technical SEO and what, what the specific things mean and some of the things that we take. And uh, yeah, this, is, this is just an example of a, of a readability score that you get for free with Yoast in WordPress. But we provide you know, dozens of pages to our clients every month on reports for technical SEO. So tell me a little bit about what technical SEO is and what you do to help improve the site's overall SEO health. Okay, so technical SEO, I think is the um, the term that most people get confused by. I think a lot of times um, when people think of SEO, they're thinking of blogs and uh, keywords. Um, this is the piece on the background that um, is structural, structural, sorry, and um, more technical. A lot of times um, it ties into even when the site was created and how it was set up with the site maps and the robot text files and just, it, it's all the technical pieces involved in a website. Um, the piece that we work on the most are listed here, the tags, the headings, the titles and duplicate content. And that's more of monitoring to make sure um, that isn't happening on our client sites. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of pieces of technical SEO that are involved um, with any website, but these are the ones that kind of hold the heaviest weight with rankings. Um, and what happens, I think a lot of times are the tags, are they relevant? Yes and no. Um, we had talked earlier about the meta description is really more for the user, but ultimately it does affect your rankings because if they're finding what they're looking for, they're clicking, Google sees that and you do get you know, a bonus or a push up the ranking um, scale, you know, mm -hmm. once um, they see that and take notice and it's pretty quick, you know. So it's a good idea to always have these things are really simple to add. Um, and in terms of the technical SEO piece, I find these four to be the most important. So mm -hmm. um, duplicate content is anytime it comes content is duplicated on your site. So it could be a blog post you maybe reposted a year later Maybe it was five years later. Um, a lot of times people forget, and it does come up frequently, or they could have used the same title tag and the he page heading. Right. Um, and those types of things, they're, they're completely innocent, um, but you get penalized heavily on duplicate content. So it's something we definitely keep an eye on closely. And we actually saw right around when 
Google said that you needed to have HTTPS on your website, we were running into a lot of issues because index pages might have been HTTP or non-secure. And then we republished the entire website in HTTPS. And then Google saying, well, you now you have both. And Google's since pretty much figured that particular issue out. Yes. But it was freaking our our big um, SEM rush reports out because it was saying you have nine thousand duplicate content <laughs> pieces. I was like, no, we actually it's it's just the website's there twice, and we had to tell Google which one to use. So you know, even when you use these these tools like um, you know Google Analytics or Webmaster Tools or the other stuff that we've talked about, you have to kind of understand and sort of keep up with what the headlines are. And you know, that's one of the reasons that we're talking today because things are quite a bit different than the last time I did a busy webinar, um, a bespoke SEO busy webinar, which is like last February. So you know, there, there's a lot of stuff that's different out there. And so you know, having your technical SEO nailed making sure that you would adhere to best practices and being careful with the cutting edge stuff because you know every, Google continually updates its algorithm, right? Right. And sometimes things that were good are no longer good. And you know, especially like the directories and all that content and the mm -hmm. stuff that that you know people that scrape content and use it elsewhere, um, that can really hurt you if you're not careful. And you know you just kind of need to keep your finger on that pulse and make sure that you're being careful with it. Awesome. Of course, the one big thing that everyone talks about is that content is still absolutely king. And so having a well SEO'd website really means you have a, a website that has a lot of content on it. So content's the biggest factor, of course, in SEO rankings. If you have 35 pages that are unique and interlinked and go to landing pages about what your best keyword is, you're going to rank much better than if you just have one page on it. Or if you have nothing, you're not going to show up at all. I'll guarantee it, right? <laughs> um, but again, we talked about avoiding duplicate content and you know keeping content fresh and relevant. Um, probably educational is, in, is of paramount importance because what you want to show is that you're the authority on this content. If your user finds it interesting, Google is probably going to rank you well for that, right? Right. Um, we mentioned here incorporating other avenues. Like what, what other avenues could we use to get better content into our sites? Um, I think, and this is up for debate a little bit, but um, curating content is still, um, something that they do um, uh -huh. give you bonus points for. Right. Um, there was talk kind of in the industry of um, you getting penalized for doing that, and that's not the case. Um, it's just one of those things where, you know, you kind of read as much as you can and, and test it out on your own right. site. Right. Um, and so curated content is big. They, they want to see you sharing mm -hmm. other people's content, linking back to the um, – the person, the author's website, right. and and vice versa. You hope that happens with your site and your content as well. So that's a really big one. Um, any any type of linking you can have right. in your content at all. And, and curated content is content that you found elsewhere. And just like a museum curator, right? Mm -hmm. You present that information on your website. Um, difference between curating content, which is you know Monet. Had get, her, Monet created this um, beautiful piece of art in 1837, and this is what it means, and this is what it does. Versus saying, "Hey, look at what I just drew. It's a Mo It's my name is Monet, and whatever, right? right?" So, you know, plagiarism is representing other people's work as your own. Curation is representing other people's work as helpful additions to further the thoughts behind what you do. So curated content is like what a lot of blogs do and a lot of other places on the web. So Mashable, um, like Boing Boing, BuzzFeed, that's all curated content. That's things that people have found elsewhere on the web. And they're giving you a link to the content. Mm -hmm. 
they're giving you a snippet of that actual content, like a paragraph or two, and then they're linking you back to that content and giving you the why, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like um, what what I call the Oreo post, right? Yes. Introduce in the in the top cookie um, what that content is, and then the creamy filling is the actual content, and then the why you thought that was interesting and, and the the shell around what what's interesting about it and what you learned from it and the link back is the last cookie so um that's curated content awesome not oh village christian church says is the keyword research a continuous process or once you set it up are you done so um i'll let jenny take that one so it is yes and no um you want to do your keyword research in the beginning um and you really want to stick to it for a while. Um, there's going to be times, and I would say six months, um, there's going to be times where that changes. You know, maybe you have a new product service or something to offer that um, isn't on that original keyword list. Of course, you're going to want to change that out. Um, another thing is, um, and we do this with a couple of clients where we start out with a few keywords that we're targeting and then maybe six months down the road, we kind of shift that into maybe the next three. So we start out with a list of 20, focus on you know two to five, and then start moving down that list. And maybe they are happy with the results they're getting from the first five, and we just continue on with that. It all depends on what your goals are, if it's um, you know something you want to see change, or maybe you're not getting results at all. In right. that case, you definitely want to start over. Right. So and it's okay to start over. For sure, keep digging until yeah. you find something that works for mm -hmm. you. Um, but also, you know, you as as you rank for keywords, I think the act of SEO, the act of optimizing your website, never stops. Um, we do track every single month how well our rankings are improving or where they're moving. You know, if they're going up or down. Mm -hmm. So if we're talking about tracking keywords over time, you absolutely want to keep doing. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, and I think this is probably where the question is is going, you know, do you need to keep thinking about new keywords all the time? The answer is only if you're not getting the results that you want, mm -hmm. right? So if you're if you're rocking your business and if everything's working exactly as planned, you're getting as many leads in as you want or whatever, um, then you're probably okay with the keywords that you've selected. Mm -hmm. And the marketing mantra is kind of like up with the dogs and squirrel, right? So as marketers, we tend to squirrel quite a bit. And so trying to always add new keywords is akin to trying to boil the ocean. You know, it's just not possible because there's always more keywords you can add. Um, but the goal is, and the point is, are if you are really getting your results that you're mm -hmm. looking for. So awesome. And thanks for the question um, from Village Christian Church. Um, and if you have more questions, again, feel free. Keep firing them off. And uh, we're, we're getting close to um, critical mass on our actual slides. So then we'll, we'll just free form a little bit. Let's talk about black hat techniques, Jenny. Um, black hat, you know, the hacker thing <laughs> and what people are doing. It's basically all the naughty stuff, right? right? So when we talk about black hat, this is the stuff not to do. And what, what does this stuff mean? Um, so this is exactly what it says, what not to do. Um, the keyword stuffing we kind of talked about earlier where every other word was monarch butterfly. Right. <laughs> um, and you'll see this, and especially the more familiar you get with it, the, you'll see it more and more. I think from my perspective, what frustrates me the most is that there are hundreds, if not thousands, of little one-man to five-man agencies out there that sell that, we'll rank you on first spot, you know, hard pitch to people. And small businesses don't have a big budget. They do right. it for cheap. Uh -huh. And it is devastating to your website um whether it's immediate or long term it will happen where google will will penalize you and keyword stuffing you'll see a lot of times um over stuffed just one keyword you'll see locations you know um i've seen an electrician's website where it's every city in the twin cities metro electric electrician followed right. before or after right. there's like a hundred of them on the website right. that 
drives me crazy when I see it. Not only is it hard for com um, competitors because at the time they are ranking for everything, um, it's just frustrating to see that and and know that they're coming in you know the top spots in every search. It is short term. They're going to get penalized, and pretty soon that site won't even be in existence because right. they will be shut down. Right. Um, so that's the keyword stuffing. Um, underlining keywords is another technique. It's kind of slowly dying, but I see it from time to time where um, people will underline a keyword instead of just naturally using it. It alerts the search engines that um, I think what it is is like a link yeah. alert, right. but it's not really a link. So um, that's another way to get penalized. Um, I'm not seeing it as much as I used to see it, yeah, yeah. but it does still happen from time to time. And then the hidden keywords is exactly what it says is where um, basically they'll keyword stuff the site, but they'll hide them on the page. So if the page is black, they'll make the text black. Um, and I'm sure that happens a lot still. Right. Um, but the same goes, um, you know, for that technique as well as as soon as Google does pick up on it, and they will. And it might take a year, but your site will be shut down, and then you have to start all over if you're even allowed to with that URL. Right. So right. it's best to not do any of these things. <laughs> <laughs> and difference between you know, like underlining keywords, you know, that's that's just trying to make it look like that keyword's more important on the page. Yes. Having a real link is cool mm -hmm. and it's encouraged. Yes. Right. So, and then your browser will probably underline it because that's just standard. Yes hypertext language, right? Yes. But again, if you if you think about what's most useful to the user, that's a great barometer for what should be on your website. So completely okay and encouraged to use header tags with your keywords in them. Mm -hmm. Because if you think about what people are looking for, if I'm looking for um, Chicago area plumber, if I have a header that says we are we are the number one Chicago area plumber, well, duh, of course. Mm -hmm. But then you have to say more after that, and you know, doing just in in black hat, what that would be is again, we are the Chicago area plumber. If you're in the Chicago area, because plumbers are great, and we we love Chicago area plumbers, and we're the number one Chicago area plumber. <laughs> um, underlining keywords would just be underlining that, and then hidden keywords again. If you have white text. On your, or if you have a white background on your page, if you have white text, sure, that's better for the users because they don't see all that gobbledygook, but Google does. Mm -hmm. And Google does not suffer fools lightly. You cannot try to game the system, and it keeps getting smarter as time goes on. All right, so jumping, jumping ahead a little bit and into some, some things to get you started. Um, common tools. If you want to rank better on the web, here are some of the tools that you should consider. Of course, um, BusyWeb designs all of our websites in WordPress. There's a reason behind that. WordPress is bar none the best tool to get you ranked on search engines. It's I, I won't go into all of the technical details, but it's just built for findability. There's XML feeds and you know, all of the stuff that we've talked about so far is just hard baked into any WordPress website. You know, you can add your meta titles and descriptions, your header tags, your links. Um, it's it's all just built in. You can use tools like Yoast and Google Analyticator, both free tools that'll help you figure out how well you're ranking and what you're doing. So if, you, if you're serious about ranking well, um, yes, there's Wix and there's Squarespace and there's Drupal and Joomla and blah, 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 blah. But um, WordPress for us is the number one game in town for developing a website, um, for checking Google Analytics and seeing where your keywords are, where your traffic is coming. Of course, Google Analytics is fantastic, as is Google Webmaster Tools. Um, if you want a good start, um, everyone that's subscribed or that's um, registered for today's event is going to get an email right after the event is complete with a link to take your own buzz report. A buzz report is about a 12 page document that includes everything that you need to know about how well you're ranking and how to improve your rankings for a specific keyword. So if BusyWeb was trying to rank ourselves for web design, 
we would follow the link and then you just type in your URL, your website address, and then you type web design. And then it'll give you back a 10 page report on everything that you should do to improve your rankings. Super simple, takes about 15 seconds and it's completely free. Um, if you're looking on to create optimized posts, you know, specify a content title. Um, so your, your page needs to have a good title. Um, your post, um, 70 characters or less, any more than that, Google will just cut it off. Um, write a helpful description. Again, 160 characters or less because any, anything longer than that, Google just cuts it off. Doesn't help you, doesn't hurt you, um, but Google will just cut it off is in the display pages on the SERPs. Um, you should have about 300 words or more, and that's not a hard and fast rule. What it really goes, goes to is you have to have enough content to prove to Google that it's a worthwhile page to visit. Google is in the business of providing great content when people search for that content. And if your page doesn't meet that litmus test, they're not going to show you, right? So, you know, having three or four words on a page is absolutely not going to help you because why would Google want to send people to that page knowing that there's nothing there? Again, the keyword stuffing, keeping it under five and a half percent. And again, content should be original. Um, we talked about the distinction between curated and original content. There's no substitution for original content. Um, Curated content absolutely has a place at the table and it's part of, um, but it's like it's like the salad um, or or you know water at the table. It's not the main course. It's something that you need to keep washing things down or whatever. Right? I'm I'm running out of legs on my metaphor, <laughs> but uh, you know it, it, you need to pay a lot of attention to content. Um, so four areas of focus, and I'm going to cruise through this because I do want to get to some more some more questions and kind of let Jenny freeform and talk about what's coming up in the world of SEO. But keyword selection, creating great content, on-site optimization, and link building are four of the big things that you should focus on in SEO. What that means for keyword selection is that, again, focus on concentrated and focused terms. Um, this is the longer tail stuff. You know, you might not be able to rank for the most general keyword in your industry, but add some modifiers and you'll start getting results. Make sure that your keywords are in your URL. So small dash business dash SEO dash guide, um, that's standard in WordPress. Um, and for some other tools though, you know, it might be example.com slash 809132. You know, that doesn't tell you anything. Google actually uses your permalink structure and, and what you say in your links as part of its ranking. Um, keywords, you know, you can't overstuff and you can't let one page do everything on your website either. So, you know, you need to have separate pages for separate keywords. So don't put more than four or six keywords per page um, or don't optimize for that. Right, mm -hmm. and uh, you know there's a there's a great keywords ad planner. Um, again, you can just Google that if you have questions on that. Think things thoughts on this one, Jenny? Yeah, I think um, these are all solid advices. The um, recommendations. They um, the URL is a big one. Um, more and more, I'm seeing that almost becoming um, an indicator of whether a site gets placed above another site um, mm -hmm. in the search results. I'm seeing that um, one might be missing uh, mm -hmm. a keyword in Sweet. the URL. So, okay. yeah. Awesome. Creating good content. Again, find a balance between readable content and keyword. Don't write like a robot. Um, Google is actually downgrading people for writing like robots now. You know, if you're, if you're not, the more usable your content is generally, the better quality your stuff is going to be. The best advice I ever heard about search engine optimization is just write great content that people will love. Um, if you if you have a lot of traffic because you're the essential resource on whatever, you know, if you're a plumber, best way to rank well for plumbing in your area is to have great content that people use. Right. So write about all those different opportunities, the different experiences that you have, 
tips, tricks, advice, all of that stuff. And that's going to get you ranked higher than somebody that's just trying to optimize a site. Um, relevance to the topic, not the keyword. Um, and you know, again, three to 500 words, two or three paragraphs, make it readable, make it easy, and do get to the point. You know, the first 30 characters of your page should have the keyword that you're trying to optimize for because Google will scroll that and your user, more importantly, will scroll that. And when they're browsing through a website, you know, sitting at the grocery store in line or whatever, if they don't see what they're looking for immediately, they're going to go somewhere else. Um, for link building, you know, that's the process of acquiring hyperlinks from other websites. Um, just basically posting on other people's blogs, connecting, getting partnerships, finding other places to link back and forth. Um, that's where curation can come in very handy because if you're appropriately and responsibly curating, that makes it much more likely that that person you're curating content from is going to link back to you. For example, if you post on a really worthwhile topic on someone else's website and you add an urgent or salient point, it's really likely that they're going to link back to you, right? Or much more likely than not. Um, quality content equals more shares, equals more links, equals better results in search engines. And then adding social share buttons, weirdly, just having a link to your Facebook page um, makes it more likely that your content is gonna get shared, even if people don't click on the link. They're just saying, okay, well, they must stand behind their stuff. And that goes as well for email marketing. It's just a weird phenomenon. Mm -hmm. The shareability index and the fact that you're okay with sharing your content is really um, strong as, as a correlation to making sure that you're gonna rank well. Common mistakes, again, um, we see this relatively often, which is kind of freaky. Um, when you build a website, especially in WordPress and some of the other tools, you can set it to not be indexed. And there's a reason to do that. If you're building your website and you don't want it to show up yet on search engines because it's not done yet, um, leaving that. But don't forget to un or to open up the gates so that Google can actually crawl it. Because if you tell Google, nothing to see here, <laughs> guess what? They're not going to point you to that. Um, include the right words on the page. You know, Have compelling content. Make sure that your homepage title is recognizable and use Google Webmaster resources because it tells you a lot of the super common mistakes. Another one that we see a lot that I didn't mention here is not having a mobile responsive website. If your website is not mobile responsive, you're missing out on the actual, op or on the opportunities for anyone that's searching with a mobile device. Might not seem like a big deal until you realize that up to 80% of searches are now done on mobile. So you're missing out on that 80% of search volume by not having your website be responsive. And I've done an entire webinar on that, so I'm gonna leave it there. Just go search for mobile responsive on busyweb.com and you'll see an entire webinar on how to do that. Um, suggested tools, you know, webmaster tools. This is kind of what it looks like. Um, that'll tell you on webmaster tools if your website isn't responsive, by the way. Analytics, tell you what your search engine traffic looks like, what you're doing, what you can do better. Um, the Google Keyword Tool, you know, this is you enter in keywords and it'll tell you your traffic versus your competitor's traffic versus, you know, what all of these things are. And you want to go for high volume, low competition links, right? right. And then moz.com. So as we summarize on today's event here, I want to um, just kind of go over a couple of highlights and then I want to just give give this back over to Jenny before we close out. But you know, SEO, search engine optimization is always changing. You kind of need to keep your finger on the pulse and I'm so delighted that so many people tuned in today and I hope you found this interesting. Um, I am going to check back and we're going to answer some questions. So this is your last shot if you do have those questions. But you know, search engine results changes don't happen overnight. Jenny mentioned that you can keyword stuff and sometimes that'll trick Google into think, into doing some stuff, but it's a, it's a freight liner, not a speedboat. And so once that ship starts turning, you know, A, it takes a long time to really get those results. So we tell our clients, give us six months and you'll see, you'll really see the needle start to move within six months because Google is going to need to crawl your site a few times and apply its algorithm 
before it's really going to show up. Be as descriptive as you can, keep posting new content, provide a strong user experience, and then of course, know when to hire a pro. And you'll get more information about that um, after, this con or after this event is over. I wanna switch over quick and just give this back to our focused pro and, uh, and let Jenny you know, kind of give state of the state, what do you see as a barometer in the near future? And then I know we do have one question. Okay. So reverse mortgages, I wanna, I wanna give you some, uh, some time as well. Um, so for 2017, it was um, kind of the, I guess, keyword terms that everybody hears yeah. was video yes. content mm -hmm. links. Yeah. Um, I don't foresee that changing a lot. Um, however, there's one, one thing I've noticed recently um, in terms of content. Everybody has a blog. Um, it is the easiest, um, best way mm -hmm. to add content to your mm -hmm. site. Um, but I'm noticing that it seems to me that Google is preferring fresh content on your pages mm -hmm. over the blog. Right. Um, in that case, you know, there are some other things you can do there. It doesn't hurt to freshen up your website and, mm -hmm. you know, put in a new paragraph here and there. Right. It, it, it is, there's nothing wrong with doing that. And if they are in fact favoring that, mm -hmm. then, you know, that would be something I recommend along, alongside a, the blog posting. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, if you have link building, I think that's going to remain strong. Um, and that, um, the video I think mm -hmm. is going to continue to just kind of take over. Yeah. Cool. Um, people may have heard some of these, um, and actually, uh, let's, let's, uh, I, I want to put a pin in my question that I'm going to ask, cause I want to get to this, um, reverse, reverse mortgages, S I D A C says for duplicate content. If I link to a media article that is applicable to two different areas on my site, in the news and financial professionals, is that a problem as duplicate content? So if you post a, a piece two different times, is that an issue? It is an issue. Um, and I see this a lot, especially on um, WordPress with the tagging. Mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. when you're tagging categories, which is the right thing to do, um, our tool that we use, which is the SEM rush and, and I believe Google would mm -hmm. like this as well, um, does see it as duplicate content. And I have a very difficult time resolving mm -hmm. those because mm -hmm. they really are, I mean, they are identical. Mm -hmm. So I have gone in and, and it, it depends. Sometimes you have to tweak it a little bit to get it to kind of get off the, um, error. Mm -hmm. Um, it might be as simple as changing the title adding, you know, turning sure. it into curated a little more, maybe right. adding a couple sentences on top and mm -hmm. on the bottom. Um, it, it is a tough one. You know, I right. don't think there's a one solution for it. Mm -hmm. I try to tell our clients to avoid it at right. all costs. You know, if, if taking it in one category is enough, keep it in a general type category sure. um, to try to avoid that. Otherwise, yeah, you kind of have to change up that second sure. tag. And, and I think to, to get around the big issue for, for this particular issue, you know, linking to one article in two different places on your website, if you grab the relevant piece of content from that article, and so for, for this part in the news, um, put the part that's in the news on that one site and link to that page, and then financial professionals grab the part, the other part that's different and post that there. Linking to uh, to other content is okay from from multiple places on sure. your website, and that can yeah. actually help rankings. It can. But you don't want to have the exact same content in multiple places on your website. Yeah, I see right? it frequently too, and and I guess that the short answer would be try not to take the same exact post in multiple places throughout the website. I right. mean, that's the simple solution to right. it. Um, you know, you can look at your Google Analytics as well and mm -hmm. see, are people reading this one over this one? If so, you know, take right. the one up down that isn't getting um, read as much or as frequently. Sure. Um, but yeah, it, it, it definitely, and it's unfortunate because uh -huh. those tags are there for a purpose as well. Right. So, um, okay, yeah, it's pretty common. Um, Village Christian Church says, does adding new pictures count as new content or does it need to be text? It does need to be text. Um, I think that photos and images, they go back to more of a user experience right. versus 
an actual um, site ranking, but user experience does play a role in your ranking overall. So, um, you know, changing pictures out is actually a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, it's just not going to boost you up to the first spot. Right. Not quickly anyways. <laughs> definitely, if you add those images, make sure that you have alt tags on them yes. that have the keywords on them. But, you know, there's, there's no substitute for good text that's relevant and contextual and has links in it and all of that stuff. Um, simply adding a new image to your homepage isn't necessarily going to help you much, even if it is tagged appropriately. But for example, BusyWeb will do posts um, quite often, actually, where we post infographics. Mm -hmm. It's just an image, but then we put the content in the, in the alt tag, and we talk about what's in the image on the top and the bottom of that image. Mm -hmm. So you can use images. And of course, it's fantastic for users. Yes. Um, and it's great for social sharing, which is also wonderful for search engine rankings. You know, the more times you're linked and shared on the web, that also enters into the program. So yes, adding new images can help, but just swapping images on your homepage isn't going to be enough to have a useful result. Um, cool. One last thing, um, and of course, keep asking the questions and we'll get back to you. Um, if we don't get a chance to do this, but we're right past the hour and I want to make sure that we're respecting everyone's time. Um, Google AMP, Facebook, um, Instant Articles. Um, what, what do you think about all of the things that, that the big networks are doing to basically devalue and decouple your content from your website? Um, you know, it's interesting. <laughs> interesting question yeah. or topic, I guess. Yeah. Um, I think as it shifts, I, I don't know if it plays a huge role. Mm -hmm. um, I think for me personally, and I, I feel like I search things differently than the right. average person does. Yeah. Um, I actually do use Facebook as a news source and mm -hmm. um, it pretty much, well, there's quite a few different outlets. Um, right. And so, for the people who are writing blogs and have that educational content available, um, I think it's even more important to get that on Facebook. Use hashtags. You know, sure. some people will tell you that hashtags are like a dying trend, mm -hmm. um, but people search. I use them. Um, right. I think a lot of people do. If you want to find quick, relevant information on Facebook and Twitter, mm -hmm. searching that will give you that. Um, so try to share your your blog links using those mm -hmm. um, techniques on on Facebook or any of the news type. Cool. sites if, if it's an option. Okay, got it. And I think the, the main thing to never forget is that don't get rid of your website in favor of Facebook mm -hmm. um, because Facebook's going to change the way they present their content and their information um, no matter what you do, right? Yes, Facebook absolutely. has its own agenda. Yep. Um, publishing straight in Google AMP, and you know, I'm, I'm getting really, really geeky, I apologize, but <laughs> AMP is the, is the is Google's tool to make your content much faster. And it, it's like literally writing into Google um, for what your content is. So if you pop up or if you have a Google AMP optimized article or content, um, it's just much quicker and it's more likely to show up in search engine results, but it might not ever link back to your website. And the goal of most marketing is to present content that people will read on your walled garden, in your content, in your website, mm -hmm. that has your call to action. Stop by today, um, order a service, download a PDF, buy from us, yes. right? And Google will strip out all of that in AMP. All they're going to give you is that piece of content. So if in our example, um, as a plumber, if you say, you know, the three ways to fix a leaky toilet, if you put it in AMP, people are gonna Google that, they might just see the three ways to fix a leaky toilet without ever linking back to Bob's Plumbing Service. Bob's Plumbing Service is publishing that content because they want you to call Bob. Yeah. And so there's there's definitely, you know, you could rank fantastic, but have it do absolutely nothing for your business. Mm -hmm. And so there's there's always a balance and always publish both ways, as I guess my my goal inside of that. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, this has been fantastic, Jenny. Thank you so much. Um, and it's it's awesome to have someone on our team that we can rely on because <laughs> uh, I get over my head pretty quick on this stuff. Um, any any parting thoughts or suggestions for people as they think about their SEO strategies? Um, try not to overthink it. I know that's mm -hmm. um, 
easier said than done. Um, take it one step at a time. I think um, the first step would be, you know, dig into your competitors. Who are you competing with online? Um, and just kind of go through that process um, because you can really get in over your head quickly um, and, and it can get very overwhelming because there are different strategies for each piece of SEO. Um, and there's a lot of misinformation out there as well. There's a lot of right. really good information out there. Um, but try to keep to reliable sources. I think with um, any sort of advice online, you'll kind of see a trend as you research SEO. Um, you'll see the ones that really matter and really are solid influencers online with sure. um, any advice. So. And if you really need to know um, who to trust, you can just call us, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Excellent. Um, to that end, I want to share just one last thing here. If you want to stay up with us and keep in the know, on hot things that are happening in the marketing world, what's going on, how things are happening. Um, you can join our um, busy news list by texting busy, B-I-Z-Z-Y, to 22828 on your phone. You can also send a note to hello at busyweb.com and just say, hey, we'd love to, I, I wanna make sure that I'm in, in touch. Or on, their, on our website, there's a, a subscribe link. We'll send you maybe one thing a week um, or one thing a month, depending on what you subscribe to. But we we keep our fingers on that pulse. And we share all of this. We, we invite people to our events. And I'd really love to keep up with you. And the easiest way, again, is just to subscribe to keep up with us on email. So do that for us. If you need to get a hold of us, here's how to get a hold of me, davidbusyweb.com, 612-4-BUSY-O. And again, as soon as we are done with this event, you're going to get an email that uh, is going to invite you to take a buzz report. It's going to look like this page, um, and all you need to do is enter your first last email, your company name, and we'll send you a free buzz report. It's gonna take about 15 seconds to get it back, and you'll find it incredibly helpful. If you have questions, by all means, get a hold of us, and we can walk you through it. Thank you so very much for hanging out with us today. On behalf of Jenny and myself, um, delighted to have you with us, and remember at BusyWeb, we help you generate buzz without getting stung. Have a fantastic month.